the swan. The swan has three variations to it to allow you to get further and further into it every time. So we'll begin by going down onto all fours again. And you will bring your left leg forward. Particularly the left foot is going to come towards the right hand and the left knee will be in line with the left hand. Then you will begin to inchworm your back leg back as far as you can take it. You want to ensure that you're not shifting towards that bent leg. This is a big mistake and you're not going to get the stretch that you're looking to get out of the swan if you fall onto that front leg. So here you'll want to travel right through to the center, feeling even pressure on the bent leg in the front and on the straight leg in the back. Once you have achieved that position, you can try to push yourself straight up and hold the swan in this position here. Focusing on the breath. Then you can move into sleeping swan. And this is where you crawl forward and again, you allow that forehead to rest on your mat in front of you. Palms up, readiness for change and focusing on the breath. Feeling that five out of 10 tissue discomfort all through the bed leg. After you've done a sleeping swan, you'll want to twist the swan. And so to twist the swan, you will bring your tricep to your thigh, and you will twist your body using this as a lever to push yourself through so that you can create torsion around the spine to help relax any of the tissues that are causing this stretch to be tight in your hip because you always have to consider the joint above and below the hip and see what kind of stretching you can get in those tissues to help you go further into your swan. Using your breath while twisted is extremely important, as previously discussed. And every time you exhale, see if you can twist a little bit further. Once you've done that three times with your breathing, come back to your centered out swan and see what the sleeping swan gives you this time. You should feel a lot easier to get into this. It should feel way less tight through the hip. And then you can just rest your head again and hold this position for three minutes. Once you're done, bring the leg back out. I usually recommend doing a little bit of pelvic rocking after you've gone into the swan. Then you'll bring that right leg, particularly the right foot to the left hand and the right knee to the right hand inchworming back that straight leg and making sure you are in the center of the stretch, not tipping over towards that bent leg. Once you find your center, you can sit up nice and tall, feel that stretch through the back leg and also through that bent knee. Then attempt the sleeping swan. Here you can fold your arms like so, or you can reach them out and just rest your forehead on your mat, palms up, focusing on the breath and noticing, just observing where is the breath traveling to and you should be able to feel it arriving into the pelvic bowl, feeling the expansion that it creates inside of you, followed by a gentle recoil and surrendering. Once you've done the sleeping swan, you will then want to twist the swan. The tricep makes contact with the thigh, you bring it here as a lever, and you twist the whole spine through. Focusing on that breath once again, looking up to the ceiling as much as you can, using that hand to push off the floor and help twist that core all the way around. Use that breath. Once you've taken three breaths, come back and try out your sleeping swan again. That should feel a lot easier. 
You should feel like you're getting into it much smoother with less restriction. And then when you're done, walk your hands back up to that push-up position and bring the knee back into that cat-cow and just rock those hips out. And then you're ready for your next pose.